Hey friends, Joe here at Reverb, and today is a big day. Um, you're used to seeing me here on the channel uh, presenting gear demos or teaching stuff and lessons, um, and this is uh, something different. This is the first day of the rest of your musical life. Today, I am going to freely give you uh, knowledge that I have painstakingly discovered. And these discoveries have been a blessing and a curse. Uh, of course, my contemporaries have shunned this type of expression because it may be too radical for a lot of people to understand. Revolutionary ideas can be frightening, and I'm about to scare the crap out of you. So, without further ado, the idea that Reverb did not want me to show you, this. Now I know what you're thinking, you take a capo, you put it on a fret, and that transposes the key for you. I'm not teaching anything there. Any normal person would stop there and say, yeah, that's what a capo does. I'm here to tell you, no, that's what one capo does. D shape, two capos, one black, one silver, fourth fret and fifth fret. Okay? Three capos, two black, one silver, third fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, same shape. And this is gonna give more of a Phrygian quality. All of a sudden you're in Phrygian. So we're obviously hearing these differences in tone color, in range, in tonality, in modal structure, in uh, timbre, in instrumentation. But why? Why are we hearing these things? What's the science behind this? What's the math behind this? I combine math and science to figure this out. And if I had more time, if I had a few hours, I would go through it with you with the quadratic formula, the Pythagorean theorem, the, the, the golden ratio, everything. It, it, it all comes into play here. Um, and, and to be fair, I'm not the first one to put three capos on, on an instrument. That honor belongs to trailblazer Stan Malone in the autumn of 1924, put three capos on his banjo. We haven't heard anything about Stan Malone since. Wonder why. Okay, so with four capos, three black, one silver, we are getting into ideas of microtonality. We're getting into nonlinear, multimodal, otherworldly, extraterrestrial type of language. Oh, also, you won't hear any of the nuance here without these headphones. That sounds like a Stravinsky ballet uh, in, in a chord. Eighth note triplets with the accent on the middle triplet like, you know, he did it. And with the bassoons doing their runs and, and, the, and the violas uh, swelling. That sounds like the birth and the death of a dinosaur. That sounds like the comet that came and, and, and wiped out the dinosaurs, but that comet is Van Gogh's Starry Night. You might be asking, do we put on a fifth? Well, I didn't intend on doing that in this video because I feel like that's pushing it a little too far. But I did some digging and I found another capo. Let's see what happens. Okay. Here we go, folks. We've got five capos, four black, one silver, frets one, two, three, four, and five. Oh my God, oh my God, they did it. They shut us down. This is not surprising, I knew this was gonna happen. All right, you know what to do. You're empowered, you have the knowledge. Go out there, round up all the capos, black, silver, any other color you can find. Round them up, put them on your guitar. Uh, uh, remember Stan Malone, give all my guitars to Andy. Tell my story, tell- <laughs> 